and welcome back to uh, another eBay rescue at Bunter's Yard. I've got um, three of these 100 ton um, tankers from Hornby and they've all been um, weathered by the previous owner so it's not my particular taste of uh, weathering so I bought them on a flyer hoping that the paint would come off which is one of the first things we need to uh, to attend to before we can then start adding our weathering here so we've got the Merco one the BP one we're doing today uh, and there's another BP as well um, so all the same but different so uh, the Merco one we've done already I'll show you that at the end so the first thing we need to do is get this um, get this paint off um, now let's have a little sort of play around with it I managed to get a little bit off with um, just using airbrush uh, cleaner and, uh, and a brush um, but that's going to take uh, quite some time I think and there's lots of little nooks and crannies although we don't need to get the whole bit off because it's going to be weathered anyway but we want to get it as good as we can I suppose so the easiest way is to take this apart I think because um, there's weights inside the body and because we're going to be immersing this in a in a liquid um, it'll get wet inside and it just takes ages to dry so let's take it apart anyway the uh, the bottom pops off using these, these little clips just uh, be gentle with those they do eventually pop off just trying to be trying not to snap it it's quite um, quite delicate there I think in the middle That's it. Pop the ladder out of the way. I had a ladder mirror on this, so I've got a spare one somewhere, so I'll uh, borrow that. And then you can see the weights inside, and they're on that black tack type of stuff. Now, if we soak that, that gets ruined anyway, so uh, let's put it off. It's still quite nice and sticky. We should be able to use that again, I think, at the end. same with that weight there just remember to put these weights back in otherwise this is a particularly light and um, sort of top heavy model otherwise uh, it, it just wraps down the track probably so to get that old paintwork off we're going to use uh, today methylated spirits and we're going to use this in a little bath we're going to soak them in there um, so just leave the door open or do this outside because it is a bit smelly but all oh, that's quite a nice smell it takes me back to my childhood days um, so yeah bring back some memories but um, the thing about the meths is that it will not just take off that paintwork it will take off the original paintwork as well if you leave it in long enough so uh, it really needs to be fairly quick and you can see how quickly that's going to fall off and there's going to be little bits uh, sort of stuck on a bit thicker than the rest uh, but just really lightly with the toothbrush just brush that back and you can see if I leave it in too long you will start to um, there you go you can see that green stripe just starting to disappear so that's how quick this stuff works so just be very careful if it's a pristine model then do it you know if it's something you want to rescue properly just do it by hand one bit at a time um, this one doesn't matter because we're going to fade that stripe back anyway because it's going to be an old weathered uh, um, tanker and um, it doesn't matter if we don't get it all off because as I say we're going, we're going to weather it anyway but we want to get the majority off to give us a good start as we can um, now as soon as you've taken the uh, um, the paintwork off just run it under the tap and that just gets rid of all the meths and um, and it stops sort of activating that and it won't sort of strip your paint back any further so um, yeah do that do that fairly quickly uh, otherwise um, you could be disappointed and take off the original livery and paintwork which we uh, we're not um, totally after today so we're doing the same with the bogey there's uh, or the chassis there's there's uh, quite a bit of paint here and there and the little bits and pieces the mess doesn't seem to be affecting that red um, stripe on that the red paintwork or the um, 
or the, uh, the, the, the stickers that are on there. And then the uh, walkway on the top. Not really fussed about this. We could leave that in to soak for as long as we need, really, and get as much of that off. But uh, this is going to be painted up anyway, so I'm just going to just want to get some some of the uh, the worst bits back, some of the thicker splodges that are on there, um, just to make it a bit more even for when we do repaint it in a moment. So here's all the pieces all uh, finished and dry. So they uh, are looking a little bit better already. As you can see, that paintwork's come off there, but I'm not really, as I say, not fussed about that. Luckily, all the uh, all the markings uh, and the warning labels never all stayed on, which is uh, which is a great news. But we are going to just flat this back and using just a Tamiya sponge just to take it back a little bit more to make it look a little bit more um, sort of old and used and abused, weathered and faded, and all those uh, all the words that we like to use. on the other side as well now I like to use these Tamiya sponges they come like, I mean, in different grades um, it's it just uh, more, you know they're very flexible being a sponge um, although you could use uh, you know just normal wet and dry paper or even uh, if you've got the glass fiber brush that sort of thing um, you know the pens then uh, that would work equally well if, uh, if you want to fade these back as well. So let's get all that uh, dry paint off, all the powders, the dust. Just gonna give it a wipe with that. I'll give it a proper clean once it's uh, reassembled, um, just with the damp cloth, just to make sure we get the rest of it off. Now the wheels I've taken off for now. Uh, these are pretty basic ones. We're gonna reuse these anyway. Um, but I've taken them off because they're going to need a painting and uh, it's easier to leave the walkway off as well at the moment because uh, it, it just makes it much easier to paint with the walkway left to one side so I'm going to put these back together again put the weights back in black tag is still uh, nice and sticky which is great pop that back together and then we'll stick it on the chassis. Now the join at the top, um, I'm not worried about, we're not gonna see that anyway, uh, once the walkway's on, so we're gonna leave that today. Uh, the ends, if you're doing this for your layout, you may want to just uh, just a sort of fill and uh, flat the ends back where that join line goes down the, the middle of the, uh, the end, but uh, not today. So we're going to make a start by um, airbrushing on um, some sort of dirt colour. So this is US Dark Earth. If uh, if you're interested, I'll put the colours in the uh, in the description down below and sort of shout them out as we go along. Um, this is just colours I've got to hand. You don't need to use these um, particular shades if you're modelling in a different environment. You might want to use different colours that match your track or your other um, wagons. So we're using a dry brush just to uh, just to drag down um, from top to bottom to create these sort of little runs um, as if the water's washed it off to some degree. And it hasn't got to be uniform along its length. We can um, emphasize particular areas and just have it a little bit thicker and, and uh, more or less here and there. And if you want, you can just uh, brush it off completely almost um, where you don't want it to appear and we're going to do that in three or four different sort of um, passes along the the um, the wagon otherwise if you start at one end especially with a wagon of this size if you spray it all uh, with this light coat by the time you get to the end it's dry and it makes it a bit more tricky and you start need to use thinners and stuff and it work a little bit differently so uh, that's why we're doing it in bits we haven't got to be particularly careful we're going to go over this a few times with different colors so we're going to use a second pass once that's dried 
and uh, we're just going to do um, just particular areas that I would just want thicker um, sort of streaking to appear. And you can do this with as many colours as you like. So I'm just going to stick to two with this particular one, or for the dirt anyway. Um, but then we need to add uh, some to the uh, to the underbelly and uh, and the lower body, I guess. And then um, also on the on the bogus as well. So you're just going to use the same colour, dark earth. Just covering uh, just just something there. We need a, a colour on that. For the weathering palace to key into a little bit later on and then because these are quite pronounced these um these tanks hanging underneath we'll just give them a proper paint as well and also the tops of the uh bogies where they uh, if you go around a sharp curve um like a, a a small radius these are going to show so we need to make sure the tops are um are painted as well we're going to add some of the same dark earth to the top just to uh, just to dirty up a little bit more at the top there, and um, it, it blends it ever slightly off to the uh, over the streaking we've already done. So change of colour, and I've added in um, sand, which is a light, very light sort of beige colour, into the uh, into the air gum, and again we'll just drag it down. It just creates a contrast and a slightly different uh, shade. You can see the colour as it goes on there, it's a little bit different. And we're doing it the same, we'll do it in sort of three or four stages along the way. And also the ends of the tanks, we've done pretty much the same, um, the same sort of um, technique as, as this with the streaks. Although the ends, uh, we've left a little bit darker, a little bit heavier, dirtier. So we're going to change up the colour. We're going to do these oil streaks, which are fairly obligatory on on uh, any weather tankers. So this first colour is the German black brown. So it's just a really dark dark brown. Um, don't want to go all totally black with these because I think it looks a bit unnatural. Um, so we're going to use a few different colours just to try and um, sort of blend it in a little bit more. Now on a light tanker like this. These colours are going to show. Um, um, it's going to be more pronounced, obviously, but it's a higher contrast as we do these oil streaks. On a darker coloured wagon, dark blue or one of the dark greens, you may have to adapt your technique very slightly to uh, to make it stand out um, as you do this streaking. So we're starting off with this, as uh, a black brown which is uh, this very dark sort of brown colour um, and this just looks like sort of dirty oil and then we're going to change the colour in the uh, in the brush and we're using uh, Old Faithful which is uh, Vallejo Smoke and I've mixed this down really really thinly um, and it just creates this kind of smoky old oil look sort of haze just to soften the edges off a little bit Hopefully as it's applied you can see just creates a bit of a blend between the uh that black brown and the uh, and the sort of cleaner part of the body. And then our final colour is going to be black and this is going on really really lightly. Um although the um the pressure on the airbrush is still at about 20 psi. The uh, the trigger allows me to just do it very very gently, so I'm only using a little bit of uh, air uh, and a little bit of paint, uh, just to create very small um, sort of runs. This is the darkest, obviously, the of the colours. This is the black. This is the Vallejo air, so it's already pre-mixed.
So the walkway, we'll put that to one side by the way. The, the uh, walkway, um, it wasn't cleaned off completely, so uh, it's fine. I just wanted a bit, uh, a bit of the sort of uh, the old paint to come off, so it didn't uh, sort of obscure the detail. But just sprayed on uh, Vallejo black, and then just wiped it, and uh, then the walkway pattern comes through. And on the wheels, we can use the German dark um, black brown again. Just to um, just to give that a key for the um, the powers a little bit later. Now here I am trying to refit the uh, the walkway. Uh, it clips in at the ends there, so you just need to sort of maneuver it into the holes. It does pop in in the end, but uh, just try not to damage the, any of the paintwork. Although I think I didn't succeed, I think I did damage it in the end. Let's try that again. That's got him. Okay, so that's there in place. got these uh, ladders um, one was missing so I borrowed one from an another another one of these uh, so now I unfortunately got the third tanker has got no ladders so we're so next are our uh, weathering powders and these are the colors that I use they're always on the uh, on the palette I'll have a quick tidy up while we go so we've got the first four from the yellow to the brown are from the Vallejo set I'll put the link down in the description to those. This is Humbrol Dark Earth, which is uh, it covers really nicely. And then the black is um, Humbrol Black. Again, I'll put the link in the description for these. Our powders go on, or these powders in particular, cover really well. So uh, you just need a tiny amount on the end of the brush as you go. Um, you can see I'm just sort of dipping it in the end. Don't want to blob it on. Um, once these powders are on, they're quite tricky to move. They uh, they really don't want to go anywhere. So just be very careful um, not to overdo it. It's easier to add more, as I've said before, than, than take the stuff off. So we're using the dark uh, rust to the uh, to the bogies, and then we can just add some little accents with uh, you know, a lighter rust there. And the yellow, which looks a bit weird uh, when you first apply it, but once it's um, all blended in, I think it actually looks quite quite well. Uh, don't forget when you add in your, um, you coat it in your lacquers a bit later on, it will the colours will mute down a little bit and uh, they'll blend in a bit further. So we're going to use the uh, Humboldt Dark Earth um, powder. Just go along the length of the um, the chassis or the frame, and then um, the lower part of the the body. So these are quite um, it's quite subtle um, the way it's going on this particular uh, this particular part. Um, it looks different slightly different in real life than it does in camera but um, we'll see how it goes so you can see it there just at the bottom just has a as a, um, a fairly slight effect and maybe not not enough we're gonna take a look when we've done it all to see if um, we need to change anything to the tops as well 
Uh, again, it's quite quite subtle. Um, it looks like different on camera than it does uh, in reality. This uh, this just really adds uh, like a nice sort of soft transition between uh, you know the painted areas and the and the uh, the bits where it's not really. Uh, so that's the main idea. So that's some black in, some soot, uh, or dried oil, or whatever you uh, think it is. Just trying here where the um, those sort of legs are on the uh, on the walkway, the, the smaller legs, just to really try and get something around that. They just seem to be sitting there, sort of, and they don't seem to sort of any have any sort of relationship to the rest of the body. They they just oh, there's there's a too clean a line between those legs and um, and the uh, and the body. So we're gonna have to sort that out. I'm thinking a little bit. So what I'm trying with the oil is not to get, um, you know, that thick black line of oil, um, because there will be sort of a transition between the the oil and the the, the body where you've got older oils underneath and uh, and they sort of they dry in the sunlight and that sort of thing. So uh, there will be, um, yeah, like I say, a transition between the two rather than just being, you know, oil and then not oil if you know what I mean. So I've decided that um, the, the bottom isn't really dirty enough for what I wanted it to, to show. So I'm just going to add a bit more of that same US um, dark earth in. So around a little line along the bottom of the underbelly. And then where these legs are as well, just a really, really slight line. It's going to be quite... Um, quite subtle hopefully so you can just see on those just a very slight line underneath um, just to sort of simulate some sort of water run let me do the same on the other side as well And then the same on the uh, on the bottom of the tank. Now, because it, the, the tankers are angled like this, obviously they're round. Um, the the bottom portion is going to pick up a lot more um, mud than the sides because the uh, because of the angle where it's facing the track and the the, the, the wheels. So uh, they generally are a little bit dirtier from uh, the images I've seen. So back to our wheels. Um, some weathering powders on these. So we're using the uh, the dark brown rust. And then we're just going to add in a little bit, maybe not as much as that, of the uh, of the lighter coloured rust. Just trying to make them all, um, we don't want to make them all exactly the same. So we're just adding that bit in and just a little bit of, uh, of, of that lighter shade. So we need to give everything a, uh, a seal in varnish. So this is... Um, Vallejo polyurethane varnish in uh, matte and we're going to give it a couple of passes with this 
this just seals everything in uh, hopefully gives it a bit more protection against wear and tear and handling and um, seals in all the powders and uh, gets it ready for our final stage um, which we uh, which we'll do after this so we'll let that have a proper dry and then we're going to use our old fateful AK Interactive uh, Axel and Bearing Grease uh, links in the description to that too uh, there are different colours uh, available so uh, do check them out they are um, if you don't want this sort of black grease there are you know oil and engine oil type colours uh, they're worth, worth looking at so I'm just going to dot this on just for a moment we'll come back to it in a second it looks a bit hideous um, to say the least but we'll just leave that there for a minute and let that do something um, now if you left that for a long time it would uh, eventually just run down and kind of soak out to the edges and it creates its own um, sort of pathway um, it's quite a nice effect personally on the sides of the tankers I don't like it doing that so we are going to um, give it a bit of a helping hand in a minute so on the end of the buffers there which is uh, sorry not caught focus on that one and you see we've touched in the bottom of the uh, the bogies and some of the um, axle boxes same on the other side just touch this in we'll leave that for a second and we'll come back in a minute so we want this everywhere the these oil runs have uh, sort of started from or have been so about around these uh, around these legs I guess what happens is that the oil spills and then just collects and pours from those you know that area a little bit on the walkway and on those filler caps as well Now this is a kind of enamel paint so uh, when it dries it will dry with a, a sheen to it so uh, that's why it has to go on last and not underneath the, the lacquer. If you put lacquer over the top you're going to lose some of the effect. So we're going to use a dry brush and we're just going to drag this down and this will just um, just will help us a little bit to make it a little bit more subtle. Um, this is just the way I prefer to do the sides of these tanker um, bodies otherwise it, it just looks a bit heavy and uh, I don't like it personally and by leaving it for a while before we do this it does create um, so the ends the edges will start to dry so you do start to get some sort of tide mark effect on there so uh, that's why I've left it to uh, to dry for a little bit first it makes a little bit of a difference Probably not a lot to be fair. And that will dry further in a little bit anyway, so hopefully it won't be still as, as pronounced as it as it is. But um, if that's the effect you like, then that's terrific. We'll leave it as that. you can always add more um, to this so if you want further runs different colors mix it up a bit more then you uh, then you certainly can and create some different effects um, depending on what you uh, what you need it to be I guess um, I've missed one let's do that one we've got that one there And they just need to add uh, a little bit of oil to the bottoms of the bogies, so they're going to collect. Maybe at the bottom, there's going to be more of this um, grease that was sitting around the bottom of the bogies and around the axle boxes, and uh, possibly on these tanks as well. Whether it's they've leaked or it's been kicked up from the uh, from the track, who knows? But uh, that's what we're going to do. And then 
just a little bit on the uh, on the frame just to uh, just where the runs have uh, sort of finished and collected and pulled up and we're just going to dot that on we're just going to leave that and that soaks in itself and does its own thing and I think that's uh, pretty much done there it is uh, to start with and there it is now hopefully you'll uh, you'll think it's a little bit better than it was before um, so yeah I'll just leave you to look at the pictures the the Mirko one is on here as well one of the previous ones we've done and uh, we'll see you next time at Bunter's Yard thanks for joining us once more